No? No. 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 Welcome. Welcome. Episode 11. Episode 11. Ultra C Hobby Show. Yes. Today is going to be a, a jam-packed show, so let's not talk too much. Uh, we got an unboxing video of the new Porsche, Chris's latest build. Yes. Uh, we're going to talk about SCT 410.3 that we built. We also have some more UDR video from the track. People want to see it jumping. Uh, we also have uh, some tips and tricks on how to run a nitro engine. But yeah, this is episode 11. Let's get right into Let's it. Let's do it. Let's get to it? Let's get to it. Just do it. Okay, so just a quick brief rundown. This is a SE4, SCT 410.3 Techno uh, that we're building for a racer. Uh, I did post some pictures up on Facebook this week uh, about the build process and some other things that we're doing with it. Uh, so if you want to check that out again, uh, check out our website. We are a Techno Direct dealer. Uh, so we get some pretty good pricing on kits as well as parts and have a whole bunch of parts in stock for all your Techno builds. So uh, if you guys have any questions on some pricing or what we have availability, check out the site or shoot us an email at sales at ultrarchobbies.com or shoot us a message through Facebook. Uh, we get you some pricing. So SCT 410.3. Beautiful. Okay, so what's next? Can Tamiya. You, we want to do the Tamiya right now. I got a new build. I got the Porsche Turbo RSR Type 934. So, I haven't built this or anything yet. Okay, question though. Yeah. You said this is a special edition of Yeah, this is the 40 year anniversary from Tamiya. Uh, this was released in 2016 to mark the 1977 release of this car. So it's a remake of the 77 mm -hmm. car. So all the old technology, all in a brand new package. Okay, so what's the difference? Does it come with anything special? This guy comes with a carbon reinforced chassis and carbon reinforced shock towers. Also, you get ball bearings and a light kit with this one. Nice. So yeah. you don't have to buy the bearings. You don't have to buy bearings, yeah. Sweet. But you still need a speed controller. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's fine. <laughs> so okay, let's, let's open crack this it open. box, see what's going on in here. So first of all, we've got the instruction manual. Tamiya lays out everything really nice in their manual, really easy to understand. Everything's right there. I'm just going to read this. Yeah, just I'm going to tell up. you what you You're did wrong. You're going to build it for me. Oh. So first of all, we've got all our screws, all our differential parts and gears. We've also got all the shocks in this bag. Are these oil-filled dampers? Oil-filled shocks in this guy, so okay. really nice. Nice. That's a nice upgrade, yeah. actually. We've got light buckets and then the rear wing. So are you going to paint it orange now since no. they give you the orange? Yeah, no? this one's actually going yellow. Nice. Yeah. Are we going to cover some uh, footage of this being painted? Absolutely. I'm going nice. to show you guys the painting and little aspects of the build as I go along. So it should be really nice. So in this bag, we've got the carbon ch reinforced chassis. This one's pretty short, eh? It's or I a, guess the deck section yeah, goes together. It's a okay. SW, so it's short wide. Yeah. I guess the Porsche running that wide offset rear tire. Rear tire, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. So we, this thing comes with two piece rims. So right here we've got the actual rim part. And then we've got our mesh face. So that'll all bolt onto there. That's kind of cool. That's yeah. a really wide offset wheel. Yeah, really so wide. front wheels are definitely quite a bit narrower. Uh, the rear wheel is a wide rear wheel. So really fill with the fenders on that mm -hmm. Porsche body. And then just like with most Tamias, I'm not even gonna take the body yet, not let you see it. You get a whole bunch of parts, all your suspension parts and everything are all nice labeled in the bags on the trees. So really easy to find. It, the book is really nice, tells you exactly what you need. <laughs> We've got some nice wide racing slicks included as well. Those are a nice soft rubber compound mm -hmm. as well. So again, rear tires are really wide. Front tires are a little bit narrower. Mm -hmm. More chassis parts, some control arms. These are the, the wide control arms, so they came separately from the other bags. Mm -hmm. Then we've got our Tamiya light kit. So this one's gonna have uh, tail lights along with headlights and then front signal lights, I believe. Looks like you can definitely add some more. Yeah, it comes well. with lots of adapters and plugins for good it. Good picture of that. There's definitely a lot more sections in there where we can plug some more lights into. So mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of a nice feature that it's uh, expandable. Yeah, right? oh yeah. You don't have to stick with what's stock in there. So that's kind of You can add cool. more lights without worrying. Yeah, it's kind of neat. So then we've got all our, our got stickers some for the car. Dacknels. So Tammy is really good with the detail on their stuff. So you get window trims, door handles, all the little pieces, lots of uh, advertisement badging for the car. Do you know if this was actually like a full size race car? It was, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're not building it as a replica then? No. Oh, okay. 
I'm gonna have to steal some of these Mr. Yeah, they're pretty cool stickers. <laughs> uh, and then we've got the body. So polycarbonate, clear body, just like normal Tamiya's. And then super detailed on the body too. Tamiya goes through all the effort to, to make it look very realistic. Yeah, you get uh, like the fuel cell mm -hmm. fill, the quick disconnect for the all hood, down from the little door the handles, the lights like that's pretty dang yeah. fancy. And again, pretty much like all the other kits, you get all your window masks yeah. as well. So they are going to be die cut. Uh, so you can put them on the inside when you're ready for painting. So mm. it's a pretty fancy little kit. Yeah, I'm pretty eight. excited. Make sure you guys tune in. I'm going to show you guys the painting of the body and some aspects as it goes along. So you can learn how to paint bodies as well. Nice. Yeah, it should be awesome. Are you going to do like pictures as you go or are you going to do some filming? I might try to do some filming, but I'm definitely going to do some pictures. Okay, okay, for sure. Yeah, I think we can go some extra tips on, you know, trimming your stuff, making exactly, it look good. Exactly, yeah. That's oh, like the it. biggest thing with everything on a park You street. can't tell them now. See, he's getting too, he's getting a little excited. He wants to build. You, you can't gotta, show him. No, 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 no. That's later. You, got, you have to film it and then we have to talk and about it in a future episode yeah there's a secret thing to do but you're not gonna know you can't it. you can't know yet so it's a secret <laughs> so what do you think next couple weeks we'll start yeah, seeing over the some next footage couple for weeks you guys are gonna start seeing seeing this thing pop up on the facebook page so make sure you check us out yeah yeah i'm excited me too <laughs> hey aaron what happened here well <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna find yeah, out here in a minute. So we went out running uh, at our local off-road track, so Saskatoon Off-Road Radio Control Club on the weekend. And we had lots of fun running the UDR. Uh, everyone was asking on the comments, you know, hey, I wanna see the UDR jump. How does it jump? Is it better than a Yeti? Not even comparable. Yeah. Far, far, far better than a Yeti. Not even oh, yeah, with that jump. longer wheelbase and more It has the weight right? like, yeah, transfer exactly. way better. And with the longer travel shocks, and it's just balanced. That's about a thousand times better. So up next, some UDR running yeah. video. Yeah. I just need to learn it. It's okay, I got this. I believe in myself, I think.
So up next, we had a lot of comments uh, as well about uh, running tips, tuning tips on nitro engines. So we have our good friend Chad Knorr, or Billy, depending on uh, who you are and how you know the guy. Yeah. Uh, but he is uh, going to walk us through some of the starting processes uh, and other things like that. So here we go. So we're here with our good buddy Chad Knorr. Chad works uh, here at the shop. Uh, every Saturday and he is the nitro guru uh, so today we're gonna do a quick video uh, talking about some nitro trucks so we're gonna talk about kind of some quick tips uh, stuff you'll need uh, and the little things that we do uh, to make your life a little bit easier when it comes down to nitro um, so Chad do you know what's uh, kind of the first a couple things you do when you're starting uh, a nitro engine fresh like this one is just done breaking in break in uh, so what do you recommend uh, doing here well, first thing I would do is uh, make sure the batteries in the truck are fully charged, just in case you have a runaway end in the radio. Perfect. Good call. Right. Good call. Yeah. You want to make sure you got your electronics down pat before you fire one of these units on, just because you don't want to run away. So, yep. Runaways are bad. So what yeah. he's referring to is runaway uh, is you're running your truck, uh, and then all of a sudden you have no radio signal, yeah. and your last uh, input is probably going to be full throttle. Full throttle. And it's going to take and off. It's going to say bye bye. Yeah, so the only thing stopping it is something solid. So what's next? Do you prime your engines, and how do you prime your engines? Yes, prime the engine. You can either take the, the pressure line off the pipe and blow into the motor a little bit. I always open the carb a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. And you can see the fuel going through the line yep. there. Uh, and that's just making sure we get fuel to the engine uh, before we start it up. So is there another way to prime these a, engines? That is one way I like to do it. Uh, some guys like to plug the pipe with their finger like this. You, know, you can see that there. Yeah, right on the exhaust um, we'll, there. At the racetrack, we'll cheat and do that just because it's fast, right? But mm -hmm. my preferred method would be blowing... Um, just so you're not turning that engine over. With no fuel in it. With no fuel in it. Yeah, so, so that's the downside about holding the pipe yeah. uh, outlet uh, and then turning it over that way. Okay, so now that we have our engine primed uh, and before we start it, do you preheat your engines? Yeah, I'm, I always preheat. It uh, just keeps, it, keeps the longevity long. So all you gotta do is have a heat gun, give it a little heat. I like to heat to like 200 degrees. Okay. F, before I ever turn that engine over. And that's just gonna help it stay strong and run well and be easy on the internal components, connecting rods, cranks. Yeah, so with that, you're gonna be opening up the sleeve inside of there yeah. uh, and not being as hard on pistons. Because it, it is a taper fit, right? So mm -hmm. we just want everything to be a little bit looser for initial startup. Yeah. So now that we've primed it, so we have fuel in the engine with the lubrication since that's all built in. So I just like packet. to get it to uh, 200 degrees and uh, we're good but, to go. Yeah, and then you should be good to start. Okay, cut. Okay, we're back here outside here now. So this basically is your top needle and this is the most important needle because it's going to control your main mixture and give you your top speed and just make it run nice so okay and this carb is just a two needle carb we don't have a mid speed on this side you're right so we just have the low speed needle buried down in there off the pull of yep. the throttle and that one along with the idle screw which is this buried. one right here it's kind of buried by the set the carb there yep. yeah and those two are going to work hand in hand uh One's gonna keep the engine running nice and nice at idle, and then the other one's gonna be your takeoff. So, okay. Um, we'll uh, first of all, you always set the top needle first, and you can work on the the uh, low needle and the idle together uh, as a last step. Just yeah. get, it, get it running nice, and make sure your takeoff is nice, not blubbery, and away you go. Yeah, because your main needle, uh, you always want to set yep. that first. That's 98% of your tuning. Yep. Uh, and then your low speed and your idle uh, are only really going to affect 
uh, zero to about 25 to 50 percent throttle exactly um, so, so that's just going to be your crispness um, from no throttle uh, up to about that 50 percent mark so uh, we're just going to get it started get it up to about 200 degrees uh, we always uh, tune and really get the engine in properly when we're above the 200 degrees or so right never tune a cold engine yeah basically is what we're saying correct so we'll run a couple passes and then get some video of that and then uh, we'll start walking you through tuning this bad boy up Okay, so we're just getting her started here. Uh, Chad's got his uh, glow plug igniter. Uh, this one will actually have a gauge on it, which is on the other side. So you can see the needle there uh, is in the green, so we're good to go for starting. Green Some people gold. think that is actually like the, how much charge the glow igniter has. Um, that is false. That is actually going to be um, how much uh, resistance the plug has if it's good or bad plug so that's what that means uh, usually there's a roto start we like using the drill we find it uh, for new engines a little bit easier to turn it over after it, you heat it up too it has a clutch too so you know you're not turn, turning over a flooded motor correct yeah which uh, could uh, you know break the connecting rod and do other in, in, uh, internal internal damage damages so. yeah so yeah here we go And everything on the truck is currently on. So radio on first, truck on second. Yes. So usually we'll let the engine uh, idle with the glow plug igniter on just for a little bit, just to get it running, get fuel to it before we uh, really go crazy on the throttle. So we're gonna run a couple quick passes here and get the engine uh, up to temp. And then uh, we'll kind of start tuning in. So this engine, like I said previously, um, is just in the It tanks the fuel, so I think this is tank number seven or tank number eight. Um, so just get the engine warm. Don't want to tune the cold engine because that's just not going to work. So you can probably see there is uh, a nice cloud of blue smoke coming out of there. Uh, that's also one really good way of tuning as well. Uh, if you have a steady stream of blue smoke, uh, that means you have lots of fuel going to the engine uh, and uh, it's going to have a healthy amount of fuel and oil uh, since the oil package is going to be built into the fuel. Okay, so now we got our up to temp. Definitely a little bit more snap now. Um, so what we're working on is just uh, making sure we get some of that hanging idle out of it. Uh, the biggest thing with it right now is you go down from full throttle down to an idle and you can kind of hear it's uh, hanging quite a bit and it's a really high idle. And then it slowly starts working down a little bit, uh, but you don't want the truck to roll away on itself like it's doing kind of right now with no throttle input. So right now, what we're working on uh, is Chad is just taking some idle out of it uh, and just uh, we're getting that low speed needle uh, a little bit more adjusted just so it's uh, not hanging on us a little bit. Um, so what we're doing is we're taking out idle uh, gap, so essentially closing the gap a little bit uh, and increasing, decreasing the amount of fuel that goes uh, to the engine on the low speed. Um, so we're actually bumping up the idle that way. So most of the engines we see here in store, kind of the, the tricky thing that we get is uh, the low speed needle is uh, always a little bit too rich and then the idle gap is too much. And when that idle gap is too much, you'll get a really, really bad hanging idle. Um, so that's something we're working out right now. Um, but as you can see, the engine has quite a bit more snap. Still has quite a bit of blue smoke, uh, which we will run this guy a little bit rich uh, until we're on our probably 10th, 11th tank. Um, but we can still just go off from an idle slow and it doesn't die on it. So we're getting some progress. Sure has lots of snap on the top though. As you can see, it's still kind of idling forward a little bit. Doesn't have as bad of a hanging idle as it did before. And it kind of loads up with fuel, so as you can see, the car is bogging down a little bit. So again, you're just cleaning out that bottom uh, needle as well, and taking out some idle gap, so decreasing the gap on the idle. Billy, cart. And in reality, 
Ultra. You gotta worry about that. Uh, keep the guys next door family. Don't wanna get close it. Now that we're leaning out the low speed needle, the car has a lot more snap. We got a lot of comments on episode 10 for the gift card. Make sure you keep commenting and liking on that video because that's still going to enter you in for that gift card. Yeah, the $40, 40 gift card for Ultra. Yeah. So like Chris said, you have to comment on episode 10, yeah. not on this episode. This one won't count. You can still comment and say how awesome yes. the show is and how much fun you're having, but that's not going to get you entered for the $40 gift card. So you have to go back to episode 10 and comment there. But yeah, that was action packed. A lot of yeah. stuff on episode 11, but that's the end. So you make sure to like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. You gotta like and share with all your friends on Facebook. Um, and yeah, just comment for Q and A's and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Anything I missed? Because you're better at this than I am. I think you got it pretty good this time. I didn't screw up. No. Well, I did because I wrecked the body. You wrecked the body. Yeah. That's uh, kind of besides the point. That happens. Yeah. I'm just excited to see your Tamiya build. Yeah, me too. So, is it done yet? No. Oh. Well, I'm kind of disappointed now. I'm working on it. Well, that's episode 11. Hope Thank you enjoyed. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. <laughs>